We are now going to talk about how we can use everything we've learned about inverse matrices and about matrix arithmetic to solve a system of equations. So typically we have a system of equations, but one of the things we can do is convert this into a matrix equation. And so we're going to have a coefficient matrix A times the X matrix equals the result matrix B. So this, these are all the coefficients. These are all the variables in order. So as this goes x, y, z, this goes x, y, z. And b is just the equal sign. It's the other side of the equals. It's the augmented part, but we're separating it. And so what we want to do is if we multiply both sides by a inverse, then we get a inverse times a times x. And remember that any time you multiply a matrix by its inverse, you get the identity matrix. So this is i times x is going to be equal to a inverse times b. And the cool thing about the identity matrix that we didn't talk about is that the identity matrix times any other matrix is just that matrix. So this just ends up being x equals a inverse times b. So this says that in order to find my x, y, z, all I need to do is take my coefficient matrix, invert it, and times the inverted matrix times my B, what everything is equal to. So we're going to do this on a particular example. We're going to do this with the system 3x plus 2y plus 3z equals 9. Three, that's a 3x, not a 2x. 3x plus y equals 12. And x plus z equals 6. So this converts so that my A is 3, 2, 3, 3, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. My B is 9, 12, 6, and my X is just the variables X, Y, Z. They're what I'm solving for. So now we just need to inverse this matrix. So we add our augmented matrix. And we're going to swap rows. Row 1 swaps with row 2, and row 3 rather, because I want that one in. So I get 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 3, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 3, 2, 3, 1, 0, 0. Now I need to zero these out, but I'm going to notice something in particular here. Notice that these are both 3's already, so I can take row 3 and subtract row 2 from it, store it in row 3, and it'll still zero at this spot. And I'm only going to do that because they're already the same, and these are one apart. The other thing that I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to take row 2, and I'm going to subtract 3 times row 1 from it. So don't use it both ways. Just use it for one of them. So I'm going to start by getting a minus 3, 0, minus 3, 0, 0, minus 3, and here I'm going to get a minus 3, minus 1, 0, 0, minus 1, 0. All right, this is now set up a 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, minus 3, 0, 1, minus 3, and a 0, 1, 3, 1, minus 1, 0. So my second step is ready. I've already got a 1 here. But my third step, getting, getting this gone, doesn't take very much. It's just row 3 minus row 2 stored in row 3. So it's going to be a minus 1, a positive 3, a 0, a minus 1, and a positive 3. That gives me zero zero six one 1, minus 2, 3 which, unfortunately, I'm going to have to create fractions at this point. There's nothing else I can do. We'll just take row 3 times 1 sixth, store that in row 3. And we're almost done with the inverse after this step. We get 0, 0, 1, 1 sixth minus 2 six, which is minus 1 third, and 1 half, because we get 3 sixths. Well, now I have to zero out these values. So we're going to get row 1 minus row 3 stored in row 1. And we're going to get row 2 plus 3 row 3 stored in row 2. So that gives me a 3. When I multiply this by 3, that's a half. Multiply this by 3, it's a minus 1. Multiply this by a 3, and it's 3 halves. And here we're going to get 
a minus one, a minus one sixth, a positive one third, and a minus one half. And after this step, our inverse is found because we get one zero 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 one zero 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 one on my left matrix. One minus one sixth, one third, and one half. One minus one half is just one half. One half plus zero minus one and one. Minus three plus three halves is minus six halves plus three halves, which is minus three halves. And then my last row we already know because we didn't do anything to it. And here's my inverse. So now I know A inverse. And remember that B was 9, 12, 6. So I'm just going to copy that over. And so now I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to create a new page. And we're going to multiply my inverse, this is A inverse, times B. And so that's going to give me minus 1 6 times 1 3rd and 1 half, 1 half 0 minus 3 halves, 1 6 again, minus 1 3rd, 1 half, and we're going to multiply that by 9 12 6. So now all we need to do is some matrix multiplication, so it's this row times my only column, gives me minus 1 6 times 9 plus 1 3rd times 12, plus one-half times six. And we'll come back to that in just a second. Then we get one-half times nine plus zero times 12 minus three-halves times six, and one-sixth times nine minus one-third times 12 plus one-half times six. Well, I'm going to rewrite these so they all have the same denominator and all the, the multiplication is done. So this is minus 9, 6, plus 24, 6, double it, plus 18, 6, because I need to triple it. The halves are okay, because we just have 9 halves minus 18 halves. The 12 and the 0 go away. And this gives me a positive 9, 6, a minus 24, 6, and a positive 18, 6. Adding these together... 24 plus 18 minus 9. 24 plus 18 is 42. Minus 9 is 33 6. 9 halves minus 18 halves is minus 9 halves. And 9 plus 18 is 27. Minus 24 is 3 6. We reduce our fractions to get 11 halves minus 9 halves and 1 half, and this is equal to, remember, our x matrix, which is equal to x, y, z. So my answer is the point 11 halves minus 9 halves, 1 half. It's a lot of work to get to the answer, but it's one another way we have of using matrices to solve systems of equations.